Hey gang, we're in Miami and we are at Woodland Park Cemetery South in Miami. And we're here to visit the grave of a World War II B-17 bomber pilot. His name's Charlie Brown and it is one heck of a story if you haven't heard it. It would actually involve him and another pilot, a German pilot named Franz Stigler, opposing forces, World War II. The Americans were on a bomb mission and they would face, among the flak guns, the Luftwaffe. This story started five days before Christmas in 1943. The man, Charles Lester Brown, was from Western Virginia. Charlie, as he was called, as I mentioned, was a Flying Fortress pilot. He was only 21 years old, the old B-17. He flew with the 527th Bombardment Squadron of the 379th Bombardment Group. They were stationed at RAF Kimbleton in England. And their B-17 was named Ye Old Pub. That's right, just like the pub, Ye Old Pub. He was on his very first mission they were in a group of 500 bombers heading towards an airplane factory in Bremen, Germany. Bremen was guarded by more than 250 flak guns, the dreaded 88s. And it was not going to be a milk run on that day. Expected enemy aircraft, a lot of them, a lot of fighter resistance. The feared yellow-nosed painted Messerschmitt BF-109. So they started their bomb run. They were at the initial point. They got in the final run, a straight line where no airplane can deviate left, right, up, or down. You just hope for the best. You can't dodge the flak. And you really become easy targets for good gunners, which the Germans were. Imagine all of that flak, you go over it, and ye old pub was hit, and she was hit hard. And she was hit right in the nose. Practically blew the front of the aircraft off. Shattered the plexiglass nose, knocked out engine number two. Engine number four was now sputtering. Most of her guns were knocked out. The crew was in bad shape. One guy had his leg blown off, another one was dead, but they were still flying. And they would continue on, make the run. But then that is where they would see the Luftwaffe. That is when the Luftwaffe would come, the Messerschmitts and they pounced. Now the bombers have to stay in formation and very, very tight because that's their defense. All of those guns trained on one target. But Charlie and group, they're faltering and foundering, sputtering. So they fell out of formation and they were immediately, they were, they were attacked. They were vulnerable and attacked. With that, they were further shot up. They were just shot to pieces. The plane went into a nosedive, and just before the ground, Charlie pulled up. Got that thing upright, and it's just puttering along. Now, down on the ground, down on the ground, you have a man named a pilot an ace, uh, one of the top pilots, Stigler, 
He's refueling, rearming. He wants to get back up. He's just done a lot of damage. And he's standing there. His plane's about finished. And he looks up, and there goes Charlie Brown's B-17 flying by, stumbling by. And he's like, stop, pull the fuel hose, jumps in, starts up, and he goes after him. And he catches them. He comes all the way up and he plans his attack. He is going to knock them out of the sky. He's going to do his job. What he did though, which was kind of unusual, was he actually, they were such bad shape, almost no engines, he pulled alongside to maybe taunt them and see. And Charlie Brown's looking and all of a sudden in the corner of his eye he sees his worst nightmare. And there's Franz and he gives him like a, a little wave and then he drops back. He drops back to the tail of the B-17. He gets right behind it and close and he is staring at the tail gunner he's staring at the tail gunner and he's looking and he's looking and he's about to engage and blow them out of the sky and he seals he sees the tail gunner laying there bleeding he's that close and right then a humanitarian brother man to man fellow man just like kicked in he said he couldn't shoot and he pulls up speeds up pulls up and all the crew that can stand are watching they're like what's going on he pulls up right tight to the cockpit charlie brown looks up and he says what is going on and what happens is they watch Franz go like this and a wave, a salute and a wave. And he tips his wing and he flies off. And he is known as the man, he let the, the man who let them go. Now, Franz could have been executed if another German pilot had witnessed that. He could have been. I mean, anything could have happened. He would later say, I saw him and I just couldn't shoot. He would say that if I didn't see him, it would have been different. When you shoot, you are shooting at airplanes. You're not thinking of people inside. But when he saw a man, everything changed. His guns stood silent. He would not attack. Men couldn't believe it. They watched as he pulled away. Just like that, he was gone. Ye old pub would make it back. All the men would survive but one. And decades later, those two pilots would meet, first on long distance telephone, and then together they'd have reunions. 57 years after that fateful day, the two former combatants met. This footage was shot by a friend. I was so happy as we met that I dropped him on top of him. What's the DJ? It was an emotional moment for Franz Stiegler. The two became best friends, traveling the country, speaking at different functions. Charlie Brown's nightmares of that fateful day stopped, and he eventually was awarded his country's second highest honor for his actions that day in 1943. Franz and Charlie both died in 2008, just eight months apart.
All the crew members said they all owed their lives to Franz Stigler. And they did. We're at the grave of Charles and his wife. There are a number of monuments here. There's a big monument here, Charles and Dolores. And I can see from the dates that he passed maybe a year after her following his wife. There are bronze plaques. Dolores, beloved wife and mother and grandmother. October 11th, 1924, and she passed on March 24th, 2007. And here's Charlie's No. Air Force Cross, Purple Heart, B-17 pilot, Charlie Brown. Amazing story, guys. 30,000 American crewmen died in B-17s alone during World War II. From Charlie Brown's crew, three would survive the end of the war. They would have many descendants, descendants who are alive today. But sadly now, they have all passed. 16 million served in World War II, and as of today, 2023, there are only just maybe over 100,000 left. And there are no surviving veterans of World War I, which makes you think there will come a point in the not too distant future where all of our World War II veterans will also be gone. The greatest generation, I say, it's been said many times. They indeed were and are. Hopefully their sacrifices are not only remembered, but not in vain. I say let's do them proud. Let's do them proud. Thank you for your sacrifices, Charles Lester Brown, and rest in peace, Dolores and Charles. Rest in peace.